for an explosive edition of Equinox. It's not like handling snakes. If I, well, actually, yes, come to think of it, I eat my words. It is rather like handling snakes. If I, through absent-mindedness, or lack of knowledge, or sheer carelessness, do the wrong thing, um, many of the operations that I perform will simply blow me apart. Mind you, uh, if you blow yourself up properly, I think it's a good way to go. Think of the hospital bills, you say. Sidney Alford loves explosions. When he's not making secret gadgets for the military, he applies his explosive genius to more mundane matters. It was an absolutely beautiful garden, except for the swimming pool. So we decided that we would have to get rid of it. The blokes came with the hammers and they smashed it up a bit, but they didn't do very much because it, um, it was too strong. Yeah. And we tried a company called Dam and Blast, who um, gave us their opinion, but said they couldn't do yeah, it. So they blow out everyone's windows if they blew it up with them. <laughs> yes, so we couldn't use them, could we? And so finally, in our exasperation, I looked in the yellow pages and found Sydney Orford. Firing! Five! A glorious act of chemical anger, witnessed not from a trench or a foxhole, but from the safety of a garden. We'd all felt that wave of energy bounce off our chests. And yes, we'd enjoyed it. We'd glimpsed that dark force, that destroyer of worlds that so many had tried to tame in the past. And we were lured by its spell. Explosive symptoms often begin in adolescence. Ah, oh, hello. The experiments are very nearly ready. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. We have ignition. Peter Gurney liked to play with rockets as a boy. It moved. His ambition was to make a farmer's bike fly. That certainly brings back memories of the early <laughs> stages. <laughs> when the thing fired, the noise was quite appalling. There was a tr tremendous great roar and looked up and saw a sort of dot disappearing into the sky, which impacted into the ground about 200 metres away, was shedding bits of bicycle all over the place. And how old were you when you did this prank? About 14, I think. Three generations of the Loiseau family have dynamite in their blood. Aren't all little boys attracted to, to explosives and whatnot? I, I think that's, that's natural, but I know a little girl that was too, so it's not <laughs> just boys. My father said, this is mine, and this one's yours. Gave me a crew of laborers and sent me on my way with the diagram and checked on me quite a bit, but uh, really gave me pretty much free reign there and uh, fell in love. And how old were you then? Fifteen. Fifteen years old. When Ron Lancaster was a boy, he became obsessed with fireworks obviously have force. I mean, you're releasing a tremendous amount of energy 
As the reaction proceeds, the subatomic particles that are involved are getting more and more excited in order to produce the effects that you are producing. And uh, whether there is some kind of connection between the various electrons getting excited and people getting excited at the same time, I don't know. Uh, but certainly the two things go together, there's no doubt about it. In an unlikely trinity, the Reverend Lancaster used to combine God, fire and brimstone until he stopped teaching chemistry to concentrate on his first love, fireworks. As explosions engulf the London sky, we celebrate the end of a conflict that saw an escalation of explosive power culminating with the atom bomb. Indeed, the tarnished history of explosives has been dominated by dangerous experiments that many perpetrators vainly hoped would never be repeated. The first explosive mixtures were discovered by accident. In their search for the elixir of life, 9th century Chinese alchemists discovered violent combustion. An ancient Chinese manuscript describes a dangerous concoction that burned down an alchemist's hut. This was a forbidden recipe that only the foolhardy would attempt. Mix saltpeter with honey, add freshly ground sulfur, simmer gently, and stand back lest your beard be singed. Unwittingly, they were producing the earliest form of gunpowder. Christopher Cullen, an ancient Chinese history scholar, wanted to try the forbidden experiment with real ingredients. You're the experienced pyrotechnicist, so I think we'll trust to your judgment of the proportions. If well, I would say a, a little more sulfur. sulfur. All right, let's, let's try, try a little uh, more. Sprinkle it. Sidney Alford was sceptical of success. He thought water in the honey might dampen any pyrotechnic prospects. But everyone else was standing well back, fire extinguishers at the ready. Could I just ask Dr. Callum, I mean, what the evidence is that the Chinese invented gunpowder? Well, for a start, a little before the time of the Battle of Hastings, there's a, a book called The Essentials of the Mil Military Classics that tells you exactly how to make it, how to make the, fi the fire chemical in detail. We've also got texts from earlier on talking about all kinds of mixtures that go off whoosh, including this one that we're trying here, which uh, a 9th century text actually gives in a list of dangerous procedures that no one should ever attempt. How's it going? Any bubbles? Um, I think I will prefer a longer mixing stick fairly soon. Uh, right, well, here we are. Being prudent, our intrepid alchemists had retired to brew a test batch. Yes, bubble stuff. Right beside the R. Yes. That, that looks local. I'm just looking. <coughs> chemistry is just beginning to happen now, yeah? It's, it's getting dark a bit. Otherwise there'll be an outbreak of chemistry. And, uh, yeah, premature So far chemistry. it's just been physics, you know, warming things up and mixing them. And, uh, Excuse me, this is, uh, the, these fumes are not water alone. Look, it's not dispersing, No, 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 I can see the yellow there. Something's happening now. Oh, something is going to happen now. And there it's Jeez. very good. <laughs> Alchemists playing in the woods. Some things never change. <laughs> I like that. Nobody read uh, Sorry about the that. Temperature. Sorry about That's your good. So I told you it would work, didn't I? Oh, well done. We never doubted <laughs> it. They never believed Look at greenish. Go see these. The whole aim of all this that's going on here is to find a way to make the human body as perfect and as long-lasting as the universe, to achieve physical immortality. So really, it's the beginnings, ultimately, of the entire pharmacological industry, the same basic aim. This is what you're trying to achieve, Sydney, when you make gunpowder? No, I tend to uh, try to make things explode rather than achieve immortality, if possibly even limit the mortality of other well, people. That, yes, that's the awful paradox. <laughs> here, they were here they were trying to find a way how to make everybody live forever, and the result yeah. is something that kills people. Sad, isn't it? From these wildfire adventures, the Chinese developed the world's first incendiary weapons, 
more like flying Roman candles than mortar bombs. It will be several centuries before the full explosive power of gunpowder was realized.